Hello everyone, um, this is a video for newly qualified teachers called From Surviving to Thriving. You can see me in the top right hand corner um, of your screen. Um, my name is uh, Ross McGill, um, I've been a teacher for 25 years and I started blogging um, 2007, particularly on teaching. I've um, been blogging a lot longer than that, but on teaching in particular. Um, so 12 years later, um, some people call me the, uh, the most followed educator on social media in the UK. It's all very um, flattering, but essentially I'm just sharing ideas and learning from other people through Connected Online. So um, there's my email address. If you've got any questions about the video, um, please get in touch. Um, this is just a 15 minute ish video, um, essentially to support new teachers on their formative journey, to equip you with some challenges, to signpost ideas and help you thrive. Um, if you type this, um, address a uh, hyperlink into your website it needs a capital cpd it'll take you to a holding page on my website where you can follow some um, videos some research articles some resources and um, what i will give you as part of this is my um 25 years in teaching summarized in this cartoon um, so if you're watching this you're likely to have that in your hands um, so i'll try and talk about that as we go through um, before i start um, I often just signpost to new teachers. Teaching covers lots of things, more than just the top middle image on the screen in terms of the classroom. You have to do a lot of things outside and inside the classroom with and without pupils. Um, so obviously marking, lesson planning, those types of things, but lots of conversations, lots of routines, lots of pet talks in the corridors and in the lunch hall. Um, where you can start to build a pitch of what I would call typicality, routines. Um, you can start to unpick the hallmarks of good effective teaching um, through looking at habits um, of things that you do in and out the classroom. Um, so I'll try and come back to that as we go through the video. I often signpost some research here. I'm not going to dwell on this too much, but this is the Department for Education Workforce Census. How many teachers enter the profession? Every year, broadly 20,000. Um, about 10 to 20% um, drop out every year from that cohort. So if you're a newly qualified teacher um, watching this, if you're in a room with other people, then look around you. Um, within the first five years, we know about 40% of you in the room won't be in teaching. But actually, when you look at the details in the first in the th in the large red circle, it's actually about 27%, and that's where the greatest attrition lies. So in your first, second, third year of teaching that's where teachers need the most support. And I often say it can't just be teacher induction, they need, uh, schools need to provide a bit more service than just that. And why do teachers leave? Well, it's, I can't cope with the workload, external uh, inspection pr uh, pressures, uh, of course, behaviour and salary is a factor, but they're not the most significant. Um, this research from the Workload Challenge Report, so Nikki Morgan, Secretary of State, uh, 2013 and um, 44,000 teachers responded the very top line 56% of those said I am sick of putting data on sims progressor isams whatever platform you use it can feel like you're doing it all year second one down marking uh, and on my travels across uh, to schools all across the UK and and beyond actually marking is driving teachers crazy uh, so my provocation to school leaders is often, what are we doing to reduce the day-to-day -day marking burden? Not what exam boards expect, um, but what are we doing to reduce that and challenge parent perceptions or, or even our own habits of what is effective. Um, my second book um, was called Teacher Toolkit. So that's just the cover, inside the cover. Um, essentially, I unpicked the first five years of... Uh, your formative years in teaching. You can see them there in the bottom right of the screen. Um, so I'm going to try and whistle stop through those. Uh, I'll signpost the book at the very end if you want a lot more details, but much of this is now on my website also. Um, so if I just talk um, particularly about the first era of resilient, um, you might want to just pause the video in the room if you want to um, and just uh, uh, turn to the person next to you and ask yourselves um, what challenges are you facing this academic year? Describe how you've dealt with it and talk about some of the characteristics. Um, if that's something you can do, pause the video now. The first idea I want to talk about is um, feedback or marking. Um, I discovered this idea from George Spencer Academy in Nottinghamshire. It's about um, it's it's called yellow box. I don't call it yellow anymore because there's no research to support that yellow works. 
It's great for signposting to children where to find the work to fix, but essentially for a teacher, it's find one thing, annotate it, and ask the student to fix it. So you've got some examples here on the screen. Um, there's a maths example there. Um, tackle one formula that's wrong, ask the student to redraft it. So you've got this document or screen. Uh, so you have this in your hands as you're watching this video. Um, I'd like you to have five minutes to practice this only following the steps one, two, three, and four, looking at the example essay, and see if you can skim read it in one minute, and then actually just find one paragraph and just address one or two issues, whether it's grammar, subject knowledge, or some misconceptions, and then diagnose in an empty box what the student needs to do. Ultimately, the student needs to end up with more work to do than you and find your feedback meaningful and motivate them to actually want to do that. Okay, um, I'm going to move on. I'm going to skip some of the slides that you'll have access to. Um, but essentially what we're trying to achieve with feedback, so this is in my Mark Plan Teach research, and um, feedback's an ongoing loop. We need to recommend and remind students what to do. And you can, one quite nice fix, um, number five, is if you change your language and remove the word but. So for example, Ross, that's a great paragraph, but you've not yet etc whatever it would be um, by removing the but and replacing it with not yet or and is a bit more motivational so for example Ross you've not annotated this paragraph and why don't you XYZ and um, it's an easy verbal fix and um, it's much more motivational for the student here's another resource whole class feedback instead of marking the books you annotate all the descriptions uh, or, or things that have happened inside the book uh, list on this sheet, star pieces of work, some targets to improve, some actions required. You might want to target one or two groups of learners rather than everybody. Uh, talk about something to be challenged uh, for groups of learners. Talk about one or two areas to improve in terms of literacy. Um, it's another way to look at um, tackling the marking burden and uh, also reducing teacher workload. Um, tackling misconceptions as a whole group of students in your class. Um, this won't do your marking for you, the five minute marking plan, um, but it might help you work out what to mark and what not to mark. Um, there's an example here, if you type the five minute marking plan on my website, you'll get a lot more details uh, on the site. Also here, there are 14 marking workload tips. Um, the blog post is actually called 13, um, I've added a 14th, which is essentially using voice technology on your phone, on your iPad, or on Google Documents to narrate your feedback as you speak. Um, I won't do it here for a demonstration because it might um, upset the microphone for the recording. Uh, back to this slide, so you'll have this in your hand. Um, number eight and nine, for example, 30 seconds it would take me to find the work in a student's book. Um, if I ask them to open the page when they give the books to me, that saves me time to mark the work. Um, moving into intelligent types of uh, processes, this typically comes in your second, third year of teaching. Um, ideas to think more thoughtfully. Um, this is a great mantra. I do, we do, you do. Essentially, you model the work. You then do it together with the students, and then you ask them to do it on your own, on their own, and then you would navigate the classroom uh, and help support. Um, this little visualizer, I've been using this one for 15 years, um, a little iPivo device. Um, it's about 30 or 40 pound. Um, you can use an iPad beam up the images uh, through a Wi-Fi connection to your board. It's a fantastic strategy. And um, what you can do is then put the student's work under the camera, uh, anonymize, takes away the stress, allow kids to rank the examples, um, or collectively around a table for group, uh, for looking at a bit of group work together. Um, it's a great way to um, get students to model and uh, nurture some motivation and confidence in class. Um, pause the video, ask yourselves, um, what strategies do you believe that you would use um, or currently um, that you think are innovative to reduce workload and actually increase impact on your pupils? Okay, uh, moving on. Um, I'm, I'm conscious this is a very short video. Um, lesson planning. Uh, you've got the detailed lesson plan on the left. Probably some of you are already doing this. On the right hand side, you may find yourself doing doorknob lessons where you arrive to class and you kind of have to think on your feet. Both those extremes are quite um, stressful, so what we need to do is find an optimum balance. Um, about 12 years ago, I published the five-minute lesson plan on Twitter. 
and here it is in, in full. You can now get a digital version. Essentially, it's a thought process. Um, what, why, how. Um, the what is the objectives. The why is stickability. What learning do you want to stick? How you do that is everything else on, on this graphic. Um, key top tip from me is be clear and precise. So use command words from your curriculum, from your specification, and keep focusing on what students are learning, not doing. Okay, taking this further, you can then put the stickability moments over a scheme of work. Um, so if you're teaching kids for 22 lessons, and then also revisit content that you taught in the first lesson so that information goes into long-term memory, it's easier for students to recall. Um, there's the link, the 5-minute lesson plan.co.uk. Um, you can get it on my own site uh, just by clicking the 5-minute plan on my banner. Tons of examples and ideas there. Cognitive scientists suggest um, retrieval practice Quick recap, five minutes every lesson. Last month, kids, we did this. Last week, last lesson. Any questions today, let me just clarify that point and then introduce the new topic. Um, moving on to collaboration, conscious of time. Um, I guess the question here is to pause the video and have a talk. Um, describe where you've started to work with other people in your department or in your year teams, when you've said yes and when you've said no, and how do you balance this in terms of your workload? Uh, or, or supporting one another. It's quite a challenge. Next top tip from me, um, so the marking, the planning, and then questioning, how can you ask effective questions on your feet to essentially um, engage students better? Um, this is a chap called Enrico Fermi. He posed vague questions to elicit creative responses. So one question from me is, in the room in which you are sitting, how many balloons could you fill the room with? Now, by pose, uh, pausing, deliberate gives you time to think. By posing vague information, you're either thinking, is it a hot air balloon? Is it a water balloon? Are the balloons blown up? Um, for me, in terms of workload, it gives me 30 seconds to have a pet talk with you outside, to fix the projector, to get the marking out of the tray, or whatever it is. So on the screen, pause the video. Here's some fun ones. Um, you might want to come up with one that's linked to uh, your curriculum, of course. Um, these are good ones for a bit of fun, for assembly or for form time. Um, so, for example, how many characters in the opening scene of Macbeth? And note, they don't all have to be statistical questions, which is Fer uh, Fermi's principles. They can be questions which might ask um, what will, how might, and those types of questions. Uh, I'll give you an example shortly. Hinge question, you give children the um, question, you give four possible answers, a definite right answer, a definite wrong, and two possibilities if you change the goalpost. So here's a fun one. How many beans in one can of baked beans? Obviously my picture here is unhelpful. I don't give the context. So it could be a large catering tin of beans that you get in a canteen, a small microwave pot, or an aluminium can, uh, a large can of beans, um, it elicits different responses. Um, question matrix, a uh, resource I put on my site seven or eight years ago, you can find this all over the internet. You can scaffold a question on the left, connect it to one on the right, add an image. So if we go to the top left here, what is happening in this photograph as an introduction to um, a particular project? As we go through the schema work, the bottom left, how, top right, how might, how might we stop these men having an argument or a fight? And that would be based on the things that we'd learned from the play. Um, any image works. You can put this full size in your classroom. You can ask kids to put post-it notes up. You can even cut the middle part out and use it as a window over a still life object in an art, art classroom. You may want to give the grid to kids, stick it in a book. They can tackle these six, seven areas here in green. And then you collect them back. You have 30 pupils times these questions. You just work out which questions to ask. They've essentially planned, hopefully, the right questions for you. Um, it saves you having to work them out. You can, um, obviously, this screenshot is not live in terms of a presentation, but I would click and reveal all these different post-it notes and pose these questions to different students in the room. Okay, to finish off aspiration, I'm going to skip through lots of these sides and you can find them all on my site. Pause the video, talk to one another. What are the hallmarks that make you think you're ready for teaching, uh, having a responsibility, moving into school leadership? Um, what do you need to consider for various job applications? Um, just signposting lots of resources here. So once you've got over the kind of basics of your classroom practice and you start to move into your second, third, fourth year of teaching, 
Here's a template, so building upon the five minute lesson plan for workloads, what to keep, what to, what to do less, do more of. Behavior, again, this one needs context here, to, it needs to align with your behavior policy in your school. Looking at reviewing your lessons, so reflecting. One for students here, I'm stuck, sir, how do I move on? Asking assessment type questions. Again, these are all on my site. You may be doing some data analysis. You may want to conduct some research. Um, why do Year 12 Bangladeshi students drop out of ALS history? Um, you may be doing an assembly for the first time. You may be planning a teach meet. You may be wanting to use, uh, need a thought process to help support you with interviews. There are lots on here. I'm just going to skip through them all now to just finish off with a takeaway. I've tried to tackle all these in a very short video. Um, you can find all of this on my website and particularly in my second book which is there on the right hand side of the screen teacher toolkits deliberately written for new teachers my website teachertoolkit.co.uk my email address is support at teachertoolkit.co.uk i hope the handouts that you have in your hand to support you looking through this video at least give you one or two ideas that you can use in your classroom tomorrow uh, and if you need any help um, please get in touch and thank you for watching and I wish you every success in your teaching career.